We're Fairway Health, and this is our digital marketing campaign for hypertension. My name's Christian. I'm Johnny. I'm Betsy. I'm Tom. I'm Raju. I'm Rahul. I'm Henry. These are our objectives over one year. The short term objective is to achieve significant engagement with our campaign video. The long term objective is to increase awareness of causes and symptoms of hypertension. In addition to this, we hope to generate 65% of web page visits through social media each month. We hope to increase engagement with content by 2% each month. We hope to convert 3% of people that visit the website to opt into the email service. We hope to reach a combined 100,000 likes across all social media platforms. And finally, we'd like to educate audience by posting relevant content on social media. Next, we're looking at the situation analysis for PESL. So for, for political, we're going to talk about Brexit. So it's going to take, if we uh, go on a hard Brexit, uh, medication will take longer to come to the country. So obviously affecting people with high blood pressure. Uh, next, we're looking at economical, so socioeconomic status. So people with less income are tend, to, tend to spend less money on food, so they'll eat unhealthier foods. Um, social, so mental health. So people with depression or people have anxiety, this will obviously make it difficult them to, difficult for them to um, achieve their goals, which is to lower their blood pressure. Um, technology, so measuring success. So we need good analytics software to ensure that we have um, successfully achieved our goals, objectives even. Um, lastly, it's legal, so adhering to legal standards, so making sure we adhere to the general data protection regulation. So that's very important when we're dealing with customers and uh, customers information. Uh, next is internal analysis. So we'll look at SWOT. So previous media campaigns of for hypertension have been very successful. Um, opportunities. So one third of our uh, consumers use social media. Therefore, targeting them will be very, very good. Uh, they have lack of knowledge for hypertension. And it's a healthy representation of social media for younger audiences. Um, for the weaknesses, so in the short term, the campaign may seem effective in creating awareness. However, in the long term, um, patient self-efficacy may not have held because they may forget about some of the things we talk about. And lastly, the threat is that um, private uh, sector healthcare organisations are, are generally spend much more money um, on the campaigns. Uh, therefore, theirs may be more recognised than ours, which is obviously a threat to ours because ours may not be recognised to the extent <clears throat> that we want it to be. So in terms of our key issues, there is a large amount of other ads on social media, so it'll be really hard for us to, for like people to kind of see ours over all the other videos that are out there, whether they're advertisement or just general videos. Uh, it is really difficult to isolate our target market, our target audience of 16 to 25 year olds because you, it's, like, on social media you can't really target it to one group, it has to be out there for everyone to see. And also it's really difficult to measure the engagement, so you can't see on social media who has watched your videos, you can only see who's liked it or who shared it. So. For strategy and supporting strategies, this really involves utilising an array of marketing strategies, like these social media heavyweights such as Facebook and Twitter. Additionally, using specifically tailored ads and social media optimization on platforms such as Instagram and Google can be effective as they have millions of users. Our decision to our decision stem from our objectives, which is to successfully spread awareness about high blood pressure and hypertension. Our sole focus is on content marketing, which is to effectively provide information to the public around the issues of hypertension and to build the brand, however, also not pushing for a hard time. Regarding segmentation and targeting, we have targeted in a geo demographic way by focusing on UK residents and facets in the NHS, 
We've differentiated and tailored our marketing for two distinct audiences. Our first being 16 to 24 year olds. This particular segment is likely to be at university and enjoying that party lifestyle with carefree attitudes about their health. Our marketing is based around hypertension prevention. Our secondary, audi our secondary audience are 25 to 35 year olds who we provide hypertension risk assessment info. Most of this segment are working in full-time jobs and struggle to find time to eat healthily and exercise. For our creative strategy, we will be using a video campaign with information and true stories in it. This will link to a mobile-friendly website with more information. In addition to this, we'll have an opt-in email that progress, participation and blood pressure monitoring products to measure success. Our key campaign messages are to raise awareness and reduce risk. We believe that prevention is better than curing. We will be using real world stories. Our call to action is the find out more button on the video and social media advertisement and purchase blood pressure monitoring products involved in email. Our statistics for social media are on Twitter we've got 17.1 million users in the UK, with 21.6 are between 16 and 24. On Instagram, there are 24 million users in the UK, with 32% of them being between the ages of 16 and 24. On Facebook, there's 39.2 million users in the UK, with only 18% of them are between the ages of 16 and 24. On Snapchat, there are 17. 1.5 million users in the UK, with 37% of them being between 16 and 24. So in terms of our communication strategy, we have a really large budget of £350,000 that we can spend across a lot of different channels, both on social media and emails. Um, we have spent a lot of money on our website, so it's really good quality with loads of videos and images on there and a lot of creative content with lots of um, really rich information about hypertension. We also have links provided on our social media videos and posts um, directing you straight to the website, so that will improve our off-page uh, SEO. We also use promotional emails um, using plain text as opposed to having images and videos in them so they don't end up in the spam file um, spam folders. We also have a user-friendly URL, which is just hypertension.com. So that'll be really easy for everyone to find the site. Uh, looking at tactics, we'll, um, we'll be using real stories during our videos and our campaign in order to raise awareness for the cause and effect of hypertension. And these videos, given the kind of shock and fear factor for the younger audience there, um, is, we feel is likely to have more of an effect as well. And um, also it gives the chance to kind of go viral as well with people starting to feel more passionate about the subject. And again, that kind of fear factor, making people want to tell their friends and let people know around them. Uh, looking at the media multiplier effect as well, by using multiple platforms on social media to um, spread our message and spread the, uh, the video campaign, um, that will allow us to compensate potentially for any lack of direct response. So if someone was to see the video and maybe click the link but not get involved or see the video and not click the link by bombarding them on, on each platform. After they've seen it multiple times they might be more likely and more inclined to kind of get involved with, with the process. Um, we can also use the same exact campaign for targeting our, our, targeting our secondary audience being the, uh, the elderly population um, which, it, which is more useful for us and you, the use of free accounts as well on each platform allowing us to, uh, allowing us to post the video and uh, use display advertising and PPC uh, being our main roles to reach our target audiences. The, uh, the opt-in email and the blood, the blood pressure monitor products as well is one of our prime ways to measure our success of a campaign. Um, given the, the opt-in email, you'll be able to track people from the start of the year to the end of the year to see kind of how they've made their lifestyle changes and the blood pressure monitor kind of showing how engaged they are and how they feel about the campaign. Um, our emphasis on SEO as well, we've looked at that in two different ways. The first being if someone was to see our campaign and wanted to check out our credibility before kind of investing in us through the email, the blood pressure monitor, or even just looking at our website, they'll, they'll be able to look us, up, look us up and see, because our SEO is good, we'll be highly ranked on Google, and because of that, maybe be seen to have a better reputation. And the second part of that is if anyone's kind of looking 
for general hypertension information, maybe without even seeing the campaign, they'll see that we're highly ranked on Google and again, be more likely to kind of see us with a better reputation and more inclined to just click on the website itself. So this is our action plan. It sets out a realistic structure and timings for our campaign while still allowing us to achieve our goals. It's important that we're productive in the first two weeks um, so that we can quickly begin our campaign. So in the first two weeks, we'll need to gather the real life stories we'll be using by contacting any willing participants. We'll also need to start finding the data and producing the content for our different media, um, such as our video advertisements, our emails, our online advertisements, and our social media posts. We need to research our SEO, um, for example, by deciding upon keywords, putting links on the websites to sources on hypertension, and begin testing the most appropriate methods. We also need to create our website, so we need to get the data and content, create the design, and then get feedback on that first design and improve it as necessary. We need to test our PPC and then begin sending out any emails. Once this is all created, we can then consistently use all of these media throughout the year so that we can have the strongest impact on our audience. In regards to control, we'll be using Google Analytics as our main source in order to show, in order to analyze our views, look at a heat map to see where people are kind of looking on their screens, where their cursors lie, um, looking at our watch time on the video campaign, and just generally the number of people using the link to get to our website and which platforms they're using to get there, or whether it's just a normal people search. Um, in regards to testing our campaign uh, before and during our before and during its rollout, we'll be using the A/B testing and multivariate analysis uh, ways of doing so. Uh, we'll be doing it on social media, PPC promotions, and looking at the watch time again to kind of find ways of maximizing our engagement during the campaign. Uh, the opt-in email service and, um, and uh, will, will allow us to kind of measure the blood pressure, weight, eating habits, and general lifestyle of the people that want to get involved in the campaign. And this will allow us again to see after a year kind of how they've, how they've kind of dealt with that and how involved they've been within the process and, and in that way the success of the campaign. Um, However, it is quite difficult to measure the success of the campaign as there might be a significant amount of people that view the campaign on social media or actually go on the website and are inspired to kind of change their lifestyle and change the way they do things, but then not engaged by applying a blood pressure monitor or um, opting into the email service. So it's slightly difficult to measure in that, in that way. Um, the usability testing also is used to kind of get feedback on the website and the performance and kind of impact emotion-wise on, um, on the video. Um, so that's useful for us to kind of tweak things during and before the process and kind of make sure we can maximize the kind of en engagement with our target audience there, both primary and secondary. Um, looking at contingency planning, in the event of backlash, uh, the first kind of step there would be to no, no further posting on our social media platforms and on our website, uh, remove any kind of related content to the backlash and uh, temporarily if possible, because then we can put it back on the website if need be, uh, and the social media platforms. However, if that's not an option, we can just remove it entirely. And um, ensure all public statements are checked by several managers and there's a meeting beforehand to ensure that the, the messages that we're putting out there as well are kind of consistent on all our different platforms and that it's the same throughout. Um, my part of the project was to do the budget and to allocate the funds we've been given. The total funding we had for the project was £350,000. Our target age group was 16 to 24 year olds, so we've allocated 65% of our budget, £227,000, um, to Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and other website forms. Uh, the aim of this would be to access a, a sort of 150,000 um, impressions with a click through rate of 2%, meaning we have 3,000 clicks. Um, so this will go towards the um, campaign towards the online information and resources for controlling blood pressure and then this will have a conversion rate of 6% which will lead to 190 conversions which will work towards the blood pressure monitoring machines or products that will be available for customers to buy. Um, the second largest aspect of our budget is 19% um, which is on email marketing because even though our largest age range is 16 to 24, there's also an age range above the age of 45, which is still relevant, and there's a lot of people there that we can influence. 
So once again, we'd be spending 19% of our budget, hoping, hoping to achieve a total number of conversions, which is 362. Thank you for listening to our presentation. Um, we just wanted to make a few quick points afterwards to um, address the validity of our information in our project um, over the whole. So to evaluate the efficacy of using social media, this particular reference came in handy as it provided us with statistics around social media usage. For example, there are 3.397 billion active social media users. This shows us the potential success of using a social media campaign. There was also a previous study from Trello AL 2005 where they measured the impact of a social media cam marketing campaign on, a public aware on public awareness of hypertension. We were able to analyse key parts of this study and seek to improve in areas where we felt necessary. There's also an article written by PwC uh, titled Social Media Invites Healthcare from Marketing to Social Business. It provided us with valuable informa information, for example, a third of consumers now we use social media sites and online forums for health matters. Um, for my budgeting side of the project, I, um, I used a variety of different websites, but mostly, well, I started on the gov.uk page, just for some background information on the annual costs that the NHS incur from hypertension related issues. I then went on to find data about the costings for um, PPC advertising and the averages for each social media website and the percentages. So on this page by ad stage, there were a number of um, averages for different industries. I also discovered from this page that the um, healthcare industry actually averagely has a lower click-through rate than other advertising industries. Would also as a group like to say thank you for the valiant effort of the pharmacy students that helped us in the research stage of our project. So thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.